Um, on Radio 1, we're looking at the scorecard, the scorecard for the presidential campaigns 2011. You used to say the road to 2011, it's right here with us, counting hours right now. Our telephone number 0414 You can also send us a message by text. Uh, what you do is uh, send, type the word spectrum, leave a space, message, question or comment, and send it to 7197. It will be read on air and responded to. Spectrum, hello? Edmond, how are you? Very well, your name? My name is Simon. Yes. Hello? Simon, you're live on air. Yes, um, I just want to respond to Agrippina's, uh, Agrippina's submission that actually corruption is in the, is in, is in secrecy. I think currently, we've, we've been hearing reports. In Bushemi, for instance, yesterday, people were sharing money. Somebody was giving out money. 50,000 shillings per person. The other day we had people at Nambole, okay? Which doctors were at Nambole. And somebody, they met Museveni, I think. Somebody was giving them money. Two the people have been at, uh, at, um, at, at Prolo. Still reports are coming that people have been receiving money. Isn't that corruption in election, okay? Like really, the submission that the corruption is being practiced in secrecy is, uh, is is not realistic. But also, I want to thank um, to thank the two panelists that are there today for for the kind of analysis they have done, especially the political party manifest analysis, which gives us uh, the the kind of uh, feel feel of, of uh, how these interests are addressing the issues that we have. Uh, submitted by, by the Citizens Manchester. I need to acknowledge the, the submission by Arthur um, that, um, that the best actually think about this governing structure system that we have in place is by having all these different Manchester, getting all the ideas and them to uh, I'm not sure whether we can achieve that through iPod, but I think we need to be uh, thinking of a more practical way. I mean, iPod has been in place long time, but what has it done? How, how, how relevant is it to political parties? Oh, right, Simon. I think we lost you to but I think we got a guest. Spectrum, hello. Your name, my friend? This is James Kashaya. Mr. Kashaya, go on. I want to thank you for that important program and the panelists. I was concluded the the And really, the person who is, is representing the citizens. I happen to come from Western region, but there was no workshop at all that was gathered to ask the kind of views citizens want. You remember it was launched from Hotel Africana, whom did they consult? You know, some people get funded from over where they come out with certain ideas to get money, but it does not represent the real views of the citizens. We'll get that, that response, Mr. Okay. Kashaya. Thank you very much indeed. Spectrum, hello? Hello, your name? Hello? All right, you come on air. Maybe you haven't realized it. Let's take the next caller. Spectrum, hello? Hello? Yes, your name? Edmond, good evening. Good evening, your name? Jimmy is the name. I thank the guests in the studio for the big work they have done. But uh, me as an elite, of course, this makes good reading. Now, how about the peasantry in the countryside, who actually are supposed to be very good consumers of this information, such that on Friday we have change caused? Have a good evening. Thanks for the good work. <laughs> All right. Spectrum, hello? Hello? All right, we'll also, I said you can send your text message. It is going to be read online. If you have sent it, uh, we'll read it online. Mr. Larock, where did you gather these views? Nobody showed up in Western I think, Uganda. Um, I think we should not uh, spend a lot of time here because I want to give Kashaya my number online so that we give him all the raw material from Ankole. But let's get a yeah. bit of the report. 60,000 Ugandans yes. from all over the country. We divided the country into the immediate post-independence district. So Ankole, Acholi, Lango and the like. And information is available. Kashaya, my number is 0782 38 5818, call me. I will direct you yeah, to the contact person in Ankole. All right, Spectrum, hello? Yes. Yes? I, I want to disagree with the previous speaker that uh, what he's talking is not correct. I, 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 we didn't, I we didn't get your name. Can we get your name, sir? My name is Alele Fire from Boya. Mr. Alele. I, I, I want to disagree with the speaker, the previous speaker, that what he's talking is not correct. 
what the other speakers spoke about, the government which has been in power, which people can talk about, is UPC and LRM. But I don't know why LRM is permitting people to fix the road, to good, bring a good education, do what, yet they have been in power for 25 years. Fixing the road alone, it is five years contract, and the contract can be extended, which means that this fixing the road will take all the years, all the manifestation is, will be fixing the road, and they thank you. All right. <clears throat> Let's get back to the studio. Madam Agrippina. Yes, please. Go on, you have the questions. Okay. Uh, the question that was directed to me was about corruption. Um, when I mentioned that corruption is always in secrecy. And this this time it was, it was on television, we saw it. Yes. Money being given <laughs> to which doctors? Okay. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to watch that. There has been a lot of, you know, powers being off, especially in the night. But I would like to say that it depends on how you define it. Because, for example... You think that might not be corruption, 50,000 to each doctor? Yes, it, it can be facilitation, it can be oh, anything. Okay. Right. It can be transport refund, it can be your accommodation. Okay. That's why I said it is a tricky question, because there is a very thin line between corruption and maybe facilitation or right. something like okay. that. That's why I say that it takes place in the private, and it becomes very, very hard to... And understand. this could have been a consultative forum, maybe, by the witch doctors, maybe. even though it's illegal. <laughs> yeah. it's law, it's so that's law. why I said yeah. it is really... It's not something that you can easily touch and say, oh, this one is being corrupt. For example, the issue of the the 20 million that was given to the MPs. Okay, as a civil oh, that, society. That, that is not corruption. Of course, it's not. There's no form where they feel yes. a voter corruption. saying corruption. Money. <laughs> I know that as civil society we are challenging it. But also on the other side, the MPs are saying it was facilitation for is it nads? Yeah, monitoring, monitoring nads. nads or something. Including like colon and Casero. Yes, <laughs> that's why I say that there is a very thin line between and corruption. And why is where they grow yams in the swamp? Then uh, the other question, which was not to me but I think I can offer some information about the person who was calling from Kashari and saying that well, where is the consultation? Mr. Kashari, he said oh, he's Mr. Kashari. West, they don't need to yes, know. there was no consultation. I know that we worked with uh, NGO Forum in this, in this, and I know that there was a lot of consultation. Which that, hotel did you go to in Barara, for instance? <laughs> the Ajib Motel or where did under you go? Tree. We oh, don't have really? to go to hotels. Go to the community. We don't have to go to hotels. If you want to consult people, you have to find them where they are. Right. So you don't need to organize a workshop in a hotel. So you really but went to the ordinary people? I know that there was a lot of consultation. I may not, rolled up with I may not have been there personally, but I know that consultation took place. And maybe I would like to talk on behalf of the women's agenda, because a similar question can be, you know, raised. Right to me, no. that whom did you consult? We have had questions many times, people telling us, who are the women you are representing? Are you representing the women of Uganda? Are you representing the women of Kamocha? I would like to say that in all these processes, we take trouble to see that we make consultations. And I would like to say that for the women's agenda, we consulted in 22 districts of Uganda. Go on. I know Uganda has many districts, but we could not go There's to There's no shortage. You might get a shortage in other things. No shortage of districts in this country. That can, I, can <laughs> I know, and I know that very many more are coming up. But I would like to say that this has been a very, very consultative process. And then Jimmy was asking about that these are issues that we are discussing here in the studio. How do the peasants get to know about it? I would like to say that we have a lot of dissemination going on, yes. radio programs, not only in Kampala, <coughs> even regionally, even up country. We are organizing radio programs and we are educating the population. And you say the kind of things you say in this capital? Nobody locks their, shuts down their generators? <laughs> no, they don't. At least we have not had those incidents. Okay. So we have been able to reach out to the rural communities, to the grassroots, and educate them about these issues. All right. Yes. Thank you May, very much, Agrippino. Let's hear from you. Yeah, ve very quickly, I thank uh, all the callers. I think they made important points, even Kashaya, and I hope Kashaya has taken my number for evidence. You can read it out again. Maybe it's our penalty. 0782. 385818. I will give you the entire, you know, consultative Can you also find you on Facebook sometimes? Uh, yeah. Go on, go on. Facebook, anyway. is, go Facebook on. is a full-time job I can't manage. Go on. Then uh, people in the village, and we are not reaching out, I think Agrippina has answered that. As we speak today, actually, there's a radio talk show in the north, there's one in West Nile, there's one in Teso, and Kole we couldn't get because today it has been overbought. Generators are not working. No, no, no. I think <laughs> there is a party that has bought all the radio. Oh, really? And mm. discussing the their manifesto today, yes. so that one we failed. But uh, in many places, these disseminations are going through. And then on the issue of corruption, Agrippina, I think we have to be very honest. This this is a campaign where corruption has been has been most prominent. Has replaced yes, violence. Yes, replaced. It has replaced violence. Money changing. So it's economic. Without any fear and any. I have a colleague who is in the NRM who was given 
10,000 shillings at, at, uh, at uh, he was attempted to be bribed in, uh, in um, Nambole. With or without a t-shirt? Yeah, to vote for somebody, he said, my friend. Did he get a t-shirt or did he not? Of course, he did Which not get a t-shirt. So then Alele talked about... Um, the NRM being in power. I think we answered this earlier that, uh, yeah, there are many things the NRM has done, but there are also there are many outstanding challenges. You can't achieve everything, I think, in five years. That is why, as uh, part of the sort of forward-looking agenda, we are saying that some demands that were made in the Citizens' Manifesto, they can't be realized tomorrow. So we need, after the elections, you'll find disappointed Ugandans, you'll find people who are excited, but I think, overall, we should wake up on 19th and 20th. You are most likely going to have the same neighbor. You are most likely going to have corruption in the newspaper. You are most likely going to have that pothole. Work begins then. Right. Ugandans should overcome this. These elections. These elections is just one particular event in the process of democratization. To determine they, five years. Exactly. Let's continue working. Let's continue working because ultimately we will achieve the, that Ugandan dream. Where I am very, very optimistic about the future of this country. If we all come up as citizens and and make uh, corrective measures where we have gone wrong, consolidate where we have uh, uh, performed, uh, performed poorly, uh, including fighting against corruption, which has really dominated this campaign. So that, for me, is the important message. The second and last message, probably, is for all Ugandans to come out. Despite all the fears and constraints, you should be, like Obama said, be driven by hope, not fear. The moment you are fearful about any situation, you are not going to solve it by running away. So go to the polls, vote for your candidate, and honor your vote by not just voting funny things, emotions. <coughs> Do what matters. Not health, so that was education. Your yeah, that was don't our, that was our so, so yeah, people have been complaining about security deployment. We are fearing we might get arrested. Go, even if you are arrested, it is part of our experience right. in the democratization it's an process. It, it go and and vote. Don't be intimidated by anybody. All I right. think that is a very, very important message. Very and briefly uh, before yeah. you go, you spoke about the bloated public service, but yeah. the general complaint is that there are a lot of jobs that are not filled in the public service. Yeah. You see, there, there is a, if you look at the Citizens Manifesto, we actually say there is a, a, the, the model, the economic model that that uh, donors have foisted on, 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 on our country yes. should, be, should be rethought. Right. There are, are ceilings that they have set you know, under uh, something. I, I know we had a civil service medium term expenditure down, framework. You can't fill this because the expenditure is too right. high. Little I is. think we should disband okay. that and then rework because to get quality service, you need a, a very good public service like you have in India. You, they need to be paid very, very well. And I am happy that m all political parties emphasize better pay. Right. Okay, for, for public servants, and that is without a question. So we hope that um, in the end, and oil money is coming, we should put these resources into good into good use. It's not and too much money when you look it at it. It is not too much, but it is quite a bit. If you consider, UPC says we are going to, even the current uh, spending levels, we can rationalize the expenditure. Why are you creating districts? You can do the service, take a school there, take water. You don't need to pay all this whole bloated administration. They say PPP is very clear on reducing reducing the, the expenditure, reducing the number of parliament. They have a nice logic about how to reduce the numbers from 300 something to 150. Right. It is, so these are the ideas that okay. we need to rally around after the elections and take our country where we all want it to go. Alright, Mr. Athalaro, Programs Director at the National NGO Forum. Very energetic man and also very persuasive. Thank you very much for coming on to Spectrum tonight. Thank you very very much, Edmond. I wish Ugandans uh, a peaceful election day and then uh, please prepare to help your country move forward after the election. They were also the authors of the Citizens Manifesto. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Madam Agri Pina Nandrego, Program Officer for Women in Decision Making at Forward. Forward is the Forum for Women in Democracy. Thank you for coming on to Spectrum tonight. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Edmond Chiso, your host. Spectrum will be back tomorrow at the same time. You'll also be here on Friday voting day. Let's offer you...